Today we are talking about the Kef Egg Wireless Digital Music System. Let's have a look. As someone who listens to music through their MacBook speakers, and if I get fancy a $20 Bluetooth speaker, then this is a major, and I emphasize major, upgrade in sound quality. It is, of course, the Kef Egg Wireless Digital Music System. It is a mouthful of a name, an even weirder design, but glorious sound, let me tell you. It comes with a remote, as you can see there. It comes with a little power brick. You have an optical cable to hook up to a television. You have your quick start guide to guide you through quick starting. <laughs> and you have the power cable as well. All right, so here's the Kef Egg. And notice I said egg, not eggs. It's actually the Kef Egg, even though there are two of them, which is a little odd, but that's okay. That's how we'll refer to it. You also have a USB cable. Don't forget that because it's actually pretty important to have the highest quality sound from the Kef Egg. So here they are, folks. Let's go ahead and unwrap them. These things are really heavy, uh, surprisingly heavy even. And this right main speaker has all the brains inside of its base. It has the DAC, it has the amp inside of the base, which actually drives the left speaker, which we're gonna unwrap right now. And it comes with a cord that is non-detachable. And that is kind of a bummer. I don't like having the cable that's permanently attached to the left speaker. I wish they were both detachable, but just a small little side point, not a huge deal. And you can see the grill cover, which is also removable on both speakers. A little overhead view there. All right, now notice the buttons on the main speaker. You have your power, your volume down, volume up, and your source button. Also have a little IR receiver on the front. And when you press the source button, the little light changes to indicate which source has been selected. So here's another view, all the inputs. And there's also an auxiliary input on the side of the main speaker with a removable cover that's easy to lose. Uh, so if you need auxiliary, you can use that as well. And like I mentioned earlier, the cable is actually longer than it appears. You can unwrap it once you unbox it and give you a little, little more room to uh, stretch across a desk or a table or entertainment center or however you want to do it. So this little connector is like a little Molex connector, reminds me of a, a PCI Express power cable. Then you have your USB, which is actually really important because the USB is what gives you the high resolution audio, the 2496 audio, 24-bit uh, audio, 96 kilohertz. That's what's gonna give you the best sound. Now, the Bluetooth is actually really good because it uses a technology called aptX, which basically makes it so that all of your signal can get through um, appropriately. It reduces the bit rate to allow all the signal to come through uh, the limited bandwidth that Bluetooth provides. But that said, you still wanna go with the USB connection if at all possible, because you're gonna get the best sound from that. And it's also gonna allow you to control uh, song playback. You can pause and go back and skip tracks when using USB. You can't do that with Bluetooth, which is kind of weak actually, I have to admit. But the sound, ladies and gentlemen, the sound, that is everything when it comes to a speaker. And this speaker highly excels at sound quality. I'm just telling you, I'm not an audiophile by any, any stretch of the imagination and I instantly recognize how good the sound was. I could hear nuanced things in songs that I had never heard before. Um, you're gonna hear stuff, the song separation, separation of individual instruments, of uh, voices, you're gonna hear all that and it sounds ridiculously good. So how does it work? Why does it sound so good? Well, there are lots of technical details that I'm not gonna even attempt to go into, but the basic idea is this. The mids and the highs come from the same point in space because the engineers place the tweeter right in the middle of the driver for the mids. It's actually a pretty smart idea because this allows the sound to come from the same source, the same area in space basically, which is going to reduce the distortion you get when you move from side to side or if you stand up or you sit down. You don't have that, that super thin sweet spot that some speakers have. This actually gives you a sweet spot pretty much wherever you are. As long as you're in front of the speaker, it's going to sound ridiculously good, I'm telling you. So you just have to hear it. It's not something I can actually explain to you 
I can't portray it over a video, in other words. Now, I'm not a big fan of the remote. It's certainly better than some remotes you get with audio components, but I just don't like the texture of it. I think it feels like fine grit sandpaper. Just not a fan of it overall. It does work, it's responsive, all that. Just don't like the way it feels in hand. But as everyone knows, the most important thing about a speaker is the sound. And the Kef Egg is just, it, it's, it's just really, really good. I'm almost at a loss for words because it sounds that glorious. But at the same time, it's super expensive at $500 or $499. But yes, this is a luxury item, no doubt about it. And most people aren't gonna wanna drop $500 on a speaker and that's understandable. But if that is within your budget, you're looking for a good sound, you're looking for something that's flexible, that works with like your iPhone or Bluetooth, of course, and with, with your Mac, using USB and with your TV, using the optical cable, then this can do it. It's the best sounding speaker I've ever had in my house. Although that's coming from the same person that has been using his ear pods for music for the last two and a half years. So my word understandably probably doesn't carry as much weight as others, but look at others because they say the same thing. This speaker sounds awesome.